What's up everybody? Tom here with another video. In today's video, we're we'll talking about why this chart is one of the most important to be looking at the stock market right now. We'll also be talking about technical analysis levels for the S&P 500, NASDAQ, Bitcoin, gold, Tesla, and more. The stock market's starting to look shaky at this stage, and with Netflix missing earnings, does that bode for more bearish action? Stay tuned. All right, guys, well, I wanted to start today's video a little bit differently, and that is to use this overlay that someone shared in the public Discord community, and it's exactly what I've been talking about, and it shows it so well visually represented. This is the global financial crisis recovery versus the 2020 to 2021 pandemic recovery. And you'll notice they are very similar when overlaid. Are they exactly the same? No, no two things are alike. But look at the similarities going on here. And this video I expected to be making a little bit later. Notice how we're here. I thought we'd get a little bit later into that last couple of days of April and start to see the sell. So that's what I was looking at. And we've had a little sell here. So I still think there could be a bit of a recovery into the month of April, into the end. But check out this chart. Decline, this is where we are right now. 86% versus 80%. Look at the sell in May adage and run away. That's what we're thinking will happen this year. And I've been pretty consistent that May is not going to be a great month. I was very consistent April would be a glorious month, which technically it has been if you've been in the NASDAQ, S&P 500, etc. And things are about to grind to a bit of a halt. I actually think May could be quite negative. Um, is the negativity going to get us really far down? No, I mean, basically, we're just going to return to where we were in Feb and then hover around that zone, creating some boring times if this chart is to be believed. But look, things are playing out exactly the same way as they were last time. So when you see boring times in the market as an index, you've got to ask yourself the question, what's pushing it down? And remember to subscribe and hit that like button on this video if you enjoy this stuff, because we will be breaking down the sectors that performed well in the next couple of weeks in this area here. And that's very important to know because it could be a bit of a boring time. So when you know the sectors that you should be in, it can get a lot better. Let's speaking of sectors, let's have a look at the heat map for yesterday. We had Disney down pretty heavily, banks down very, very hard, some techs bit mixed. And then of course, defensive areas, healthcare, consumer defensive, real estate and utilities were the standout sectors in the sessions. If we go over here and have a look at the indices, all of the indices except for the Russell 2000 were only down about 0.7%. It's not a horrible day in the markets, but the Russell was down 2% overall. That's not a very good day for it. And it breaks through support and therefore creates bearish action now on the Russell 2000. So the bears are in control of that market at this stage. XLE, 2.65%, XLF, the two value sectors, and I put inverted commas value sectors, XLF and XLE, it hit the media. We knew there was only a month to go. We were talking about these sectors being valued back in November, December, and now, unfortunately, XLF certainly is not. Now, XLE will have a resurgence, but I don't think XLF, as in the financial sector, is going to be as strong over the next year in terms of gains. It's had its beautiful movement, Next up, you'll see energy recover a little bit more and then energy will be a pretty bad investment for the next decade. At least my opinion, the way I'm kind of looking at it at this stage. Netflix came out with earnings last night and unfortunately they missed their earnings and it dropped 10% in after hours trade. So we'll be taking a look at Netflix and more in today's session ahead of, of course, Wednesday market open. So we'll be taking a look at that. Join us one and a half hours before the market open session. What does this do to our beats and misses data? This might be a little bit behind, but 87% current beats to misses. That's good. That's a good number. It's nothing wrong with 84% plus with beats. So as long as these beats keep coming through, it'll be okay in the market for the month of April. But yeah, that Netflix thing really puts pressure on things like Intel and puts pressure on Snap later on this week. Let's now move over to the PCC, the put call ratio. And surprisingly, the PCC actually dropped yesterday, which means that there was actually a lot of calls going into the market, 0.799. So puts actually dropped yesterday, even though it was a bearish market day. Very surprising if this number continues to come down here and we're seeing price action like we are, especially if we get back into the 0.6s, this could be our warning sign that, hey, this May thing is gonna happen again 
and we need to get out of the market. Remember in that chart I showed you before, there was like a little decline followed by a little recovery to a new high and then everything went bad at the start of May. So we'll continue to watch this story. But yeah, VIX spiked yesterday. I'll just quickly have a look here at the VIX for you. Volatility index went to 18.7 up 8% on the session, yet there were still lots and lots of calls open through the day. Dollar index here, 91.20, finding some support. You'll notice here the previous little bit of resistance acting as support here for the dollar index, and that's pushing it up. This is the weekly. Let's go down to the four hour. Not too much to note here. It's pretty boring. Maybe it'll come back up to this 91.50 or 91.30 zone and then it'll find some resistance and sell off. So look, dollar index is still very weak and nothing has changed our opinion on this over the last 24 hours. Move over to gold. Gold had some amazing trading on it yesterday. I'm gonna log into the 30 minute chart here and I'll just show you how good gold can get sometimes. So gold actually broke through our little channel it then came down, wicked a whole bunch. You should have had your stop under here if you're going to be buying this for the longer term. So stop underneath these last swings. And then it came back through. And now it is breaking out again during the time of this recording. So gold's going on its way to try to get back up to the 1790. Remember, with the 30 minute, with the 15 minute, with the one hour charts, if you use any of these charts, the big problem with them is there's heaps of stop loss hunting. Look at the one hour here. How many rejection wicks do we want to show us that there is buying accumulation going on here? Even the volume was up throughout the session here. And this volume will be fake, but the point is it was up pretty hard when these purchases were coming through. So the gold chart looks really strong to the upside. You can see it moving here as the time of the recording, lots of coiling followed by further move out. That'll be pushing into hopefully the 1790 into the 1800 and the double bottom pattern on the daily continues here. This is the most exciting chart that we've had in some time, but I think it'll get better when we have a look also at Bitcoin because there's some exciting things going on there. So commodities and Bitcoin and crypto have been where it's really at in the last maybe week and a half, I'd say, in trading instruments. Let's go over to Bitcoin here for a second and you'll notice the 50 exponential moving average continues to hold. Why is this such an important level? Well, I'm just zooming out here just to show you, but look, once, twice, three times, it must hold as a level. And guess what? It certainly is doing so now. Little bullish hammer closes yesterday. There's a bunch of wicks going through this zone. So like any bullish hammer, I like to see follow on effects for BTC. I'd love to see BTC get up to here today. And it doesn't need to close. It just needs to show us further bullish momentum over the previous session. See how it's weakening right now? I want to see strength coming through here similar to what we see on eth i mean eth is showing strength guys look at this ethereum play beautiful movement beautiful double bottom in play right now it's already come down retested it found some support ethereum is clearly stronger than btc in the markets and it makes sense because we're still in what you call altcoin season even with the flash crashes ethereum really showing how it's done in terms of technicals in the markets right now We'll move over to Tesla now. Tesla um, just keeps struggling around the same levels. 700 held, then we moved up to the 720 and I'll go to the daily just to really show you what's going on here. 720 is such an important zone. And if you actually took these and put a two day together, this is like a giant long leg doji with the middling ground at around 720. So look, I really wanna see a 720 break. Once that occurs, you can then move to the 740. And of course, if you get through the 740, nothing changes. 780 to 800 ahead of earnings is very, very possible. But 720 must be breached first on the daily. And unfortunately, yesterday was unable to do that. We'll continue to follow it. 2050 cross here on the two moving averages. That shows again, bullish pressure coming into the earnings. Let's hope that the companies continue to keep it up. IWM, Russell 2000, very disappointing day yesterday. We were hoping that this 220 would hold. It did not. Barely even held in the morning. Big sell-off occurred. Now, what do we do? Well, I think the problem is, is that you're going into the late stages now of April. We saw that chart. It's very compelling what happened in the global financial crisis versus now. So look, there may be some recovery in IWM. It'll probably come up to the 220. Problem is, there's too much compelling inf information saying that May is going to be fairly weak. So with a weakness candle like this, look, I think recovery could be in store. Maybe the market finds some kind of legs tonight and moves back up. 
pushes it higher, but 208 seems quite likely now for the Russell. It just could not bounce. And if you go to the daily, you'll notice what I'm saying. Like there were buying pressure constantly coming off here, but it just was unable. It was just unable to hold any green days. And in the future, if you're ever looking at these candles, remember, ideally you close the day bullish and green. These wicks are very important. They show momentum, but look, the Russell 2000 is not the major index. So if you're going to follow the Russell, ideally you have to go and have a look at the S&P 500. And the S&P 500 is not giving you enough bullishness. The Russell cannot come along for the ride. It needs strength from the S&P 500. We'll continue to watch this story, but the Russell may come down to 208, find support. And if it gets underneath 208, things are going to get wild. And we'll talk about it there because this is a massive head and shoulders if it comes down to that level. US 100, the NASDAQ, what's going on here? Weakness in the futures right now. But I think I'll skip the NASDAQ today because I'm going to go over to QQQ and just show you where the close happened. So this is also the NASDAQ in the US. And you'll notice the close happened right on support. So around this 336 level. Why is this important? Because this has to hold tomorrow in the session as well. If it doesn't hold right here, you're not holding the 4 hour 20. You're also not holding kind of this little peak and you're saying, okay, it's time for us to go towards the daily 20. And the daily 20 is quite significantly far down. We're talking about a 331. So we could be sitting in a 331 tomorrow finding support here. And of course you break underneath this, where do we go? 324. So the bears could get in control here of the markets. They could push these two levels. And if they push these two levels, they push down to here. I'm not sure whether this is strong enough to hold. It might bounce, so it might do this. But as we come into May, I'm thinking we get down to this zone, find some buying pressure initially. And then of course, if that May chart is to be believed, where do we end up through May into June? We end up back down at the 299. So there's a lot going on and we're gonna to have to be very, very careful watching these charts. Go down to the two hour, do we have a change of trend? You pretty much do. You've got your peak, your trough, your higher peak, your lower trough. So you do have a change of trend here on the two hour. And this brings us to the community trend lines, the area that we thought things were starting to get a bit shaky. And it looks like that shakiness is really coming through. Just before 4,200, we find some selling pressure. We've now had two days, We've got an engulfing candle here. But I think where I'm going is the two hour chart here on this one. And notice how that support held just like the QQQ. What I would think is probably a small bounce here coming through, finding a little bit of resistance maybe at this 20 through the session and then of course if we clear underneath this the daily 20 seems inevitable so it looks like the market is going to have a small pullback here at least into the end of april unless some earnings kind of bash it through and technicals are not looking good for may so remember if the global financial crisis and this financial crisis are the same with very similar government policies do remember then we are going in for a bad May and markets could be quite negative. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe, hit that like button and join us one and a half hours early before New York Open. As always as well, if you want to jump in the public Discord community, the links are down below. And if you want to join the private Discord or any of our courses, there's information in the description below as well. Catch you everybody.